Thank you. Appreciate it. And thanks for uh, joining us on the floor of the uh, Association of Financial Professionals 2017 conference. I'm glad to be here and to talk with uh, Raina and Anoop. Uh, Raina, maybe you just tell us real quickly, um, you're with United Bank. Just give us a quick overview of United Bank. Sure. Um, United Bank is a regional bank based off of um, Connecticut, New England, and um, commercial bank, um, you know, one of aspirations to grow. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, based out of Hartford, Connecticut. And Anoop is with Finastra. Yeah, hi. So um, Finastra is like a merger of two big companies. One is Mises and uh, Legacy DNH. And so, uh, so this is a new name and it's a, uh, how big is uh, Finastra? Finastra is now like with the merger, we are going to be the third largest in fintech. And, uh, and this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a great opportunity for the clients because it's like, you know, doing the cross-selling of the products. And uh, which I'm going to talk more about it when uh, we do that because the DNH come from the platform of payments, uh, check and core banking. On the, on the other hand, MySys was in trade finance, loan management. Now we can do the cross-selling of these products together and give a customer like a single experience and more offering and with an integrated solution. And I think this would be a great opportunity for banks as well as for us to do innovation. Okay, so your, your customers, a large part of your customers are banks who resell to corporations, is that? That's correct, bank, not only the banks, we also do for the corporations, like, uh, like it could be uh, financial corporations and uh, tier two, tier three banks, yes. Yeah, so uh, thanks for explaining that. I really wanted people to know uh, the new name Finastra is not, uh, not so common, but you'll see it. It's a, it's a very large player uh, with a merger. But let's, let's move over to payments and open APIs. And when you say open APIs, hopefully your eyes did not glaze over. But when we think about open APIs, maybe you could start explaining what are open APIs and what are they used for? And then maybe we'll focus a little bit on payments. So Anoop, if you'd start with uh, the definition of open APIs. So um, open API is you know, uh, the application interface, uh, but the most important thing is let's start where the open API started. So the open API, now you see the PSD2, payment service directory right now in Europe that is, that is uh, coming in uh, um, action. So this is, this is where the banks are creating an innovation layer for their customers. And from us, like a vendor like us, we provide the platform to the banks. Now what is open API is like you're exposing the services to the clients. So let me give you an example. So nowadays everybody wants to initiate a payment through Facebook, Snapchat, or Instagram. You know, that's the newer generation. So when they are trying to initiate the payment, you're giving a third party control from the, uh, to create or to send the payment through it. And the bank is exposing that layer to these third parties. And on top of it, you're giving the data so that these third parties can consume it on behalf of their clients and initiate the payments. So this is like a next level of exposing the data. So these third parties, they don't have to be the member of the bank or they don't have to have an account or something, but just that they are using this uh, layer to integrate and to interface and to get the data so that they can initiate the payment or they can do the trend analysis. With open API, like PSD2 I was talking about, there are two things. One is the payment initiation and as well as the account uh, monitoring, so account initiation. So if the, if the customer, the, bank, the clients of the bank, if they want to create a trend analysis of what's happening to their account, what's the data, what's the amount of transaction that they're doing, they have a third party that needs to analyze for them. So they need data and they rely on the bank because the bank is the one that's doing it. So with the open API, they can expose the services to this third party and to the consumer so that they can consume the data, did the trend analysis, and they can grow their business. Once they grow their business, of course, the bank is also profitable with it. And once the bank is profitable, we as a vendor also will be helping because we can innovate this layer for the banks. And that is something that's going to be the future. And it's already there in Europe right now. Everybody are using US. It's already knocking. Uh, just that the bank have to open the doors and create this layer for their consumers. So, so just a question about that for the, uh, for the non-technologist, the treasurer who's uh, well-versed in finance, but not necessarily in application programming interface or APIs, how is that different from uh, someone sends a file using an FTP connection where there's a password challenge, there's encryption going back and forth. How is that different and why, why does that make a difference? Why is that, that new layer or that less overhead make a difference? So of course, so let's say you, the consumer is sending a file today, right? They have to wait, like what, once the payment is completed to know that whether the file was successful or not. 
they really don't know. They just send the file, the encryption, everything is great, but they really don't know what happened to the payment. They have to wait for like an hour or, or maybe 30 minutes to know. With Open API, they can play with it. Before even they're sending the file to the bank for the processing, these APIs are exposed by the bank to their clients, so the clients can play with it. So they can check whether this file is correct, whether the account is correct, whether the payment will be successful, is there any validation that's going wrong? So all this they can play ahead before even they're sending the payment. So this API layer gives them that flexibility for bank to play with it, for the bank customers to play with it. And then when they send the file or a transaction, they are sure 99.99% that the payment will be going through so that they, they don't have to worry about it. And with the API, they can also generate an immediate email or SMS advice notification back to them so that they can be sitting there playing the golf and they get an SMS saying, hey, my payment is completed. They don't have to log in or they don't have to check the, uh, any other applications for that. Excellent description and, uh, and the reality of playing golf. Um, uh, so, so uh, excellent, Anoop. Um, Rain, I didn't know if you wanted to, to weigh in on, you know, you have, you have corporate customers. Where is the value for them? Anoop had described some of it. Where do you see value and where, why is this exciting for a bank to expose their clients to APIs and, and what's the value that you see? Open API is a, a, a broad concept and we are, um, we're building our technology roadmap to build around it and take advantage. When you expose these services and your um, various vendors and applications within the bank and outside of the bank can communicate to each other, you can automate things that are done manually today, for example. Um, you can build, you can combine enterprise services like imaging, um, data warehouse, CRM, different vendor platforms, you know, service bus, there are multiple pieces or, or types of, of software and services within an enterprise um, that um, can be shared between all the lines of business that use that service. So why not have an enterprise solution that's one vendor and you can reuse? What that requires, however, is all the vendors that you work with to be able to speak to that one service. Open API for that one service means that you can now, from various applications, various places in the company, speak to the same service and receive the same service across the enterprise. So uh, there is a lot of value and I think when you look at, I think, where um, companies will grow, whether they're technology companies or, or other companies that deliver services, um, and you look at the IT and the technology behind, the best way, this is the best way to, to optimize um, the way the enterprise functions. It's the best way to remove manual labor, uh, increase security, create efficiencies in your processes, and, and um, I think it's the way to go. I think it's the future. So, uh, so the, the, the term open doesn't mean uh, lack of security, it just means uh, a, no, uh, a common method, or it's not Correct. Uh, proprietary. Correct. You would expose specific services, the communication is secured, um, there is nobody else can come from somewhere else and plug in unless they are allowed because there are various layers of security that you can place around um, IP whitelisting and so on, which means that only calls coming from specific IP, meaning a specific vendor, will um, play in the box. Um, but there are multiple layers of security you can put in place and secure that communication and take advantage. Um, moving data, real time, unlike, unlike file movement, you have to batch the file potentially. There is a time delay, as, um, as you heard. So real time communication through those, the service layer means that um, you can instantly receive the information, you can react to it, you can present to the customer something real time rather than having them wait till the next day. Uh, excellent. Um, so let's um, let's continue the dialogue um, talking about the, the future of fintech. Where is technology going, and what does that what does that mean? And maybe uh, Anoop, you could talk a little bit about uh, the future of fintech with a specific focus on payments. I mean, obviously API is part of it, but uh, help us get a picture of where we're going to be in two years and five years. So the <clears throat> the first thing is I as I said, you know, uh, other than API, the future is going to be ISO. 20 or 22 messaging. I think that's the greatest uh, way of uh, 
going for, for banks in a more transparent data. So now with this ISO messaging, uh, you can, I know the Fed is already going for ISO in two years, and then now we have a new solution in the market, real-time payments, which is like now booming, and uh, which is going to be the future. Uh, although the banks right now are struggling with the use cases, how this is going to be applied, how it's going to be used for my business customers or my, uh, for my P2P uh, clients. So we are helping them to build a case. Real-time payment is the future. And on top of it, the technology is like now, in two years, the bank will see their clients being self-served. So nobody is going to call like banks saying like, what happened to my transaction? Well, how much is the fee if I need to send a payment to Vietnam or Thailand? Like, or what is my exchange rate? So these are the questions that will be answered through Open API for the clients on the website or on their platform so that they can consume the services, they know the routing. And with the real-time payment, nowadays a younger generation like me, I want everything to be <laughs> got no payment to be sent immediately. I don't want to wait for somebody, or if I'm at a restaurant, I want to pay somebody right there. I don't want it to be later. So with that uh, concept, the real-time payment adds the value to provide to have an instant payment and more clarity, like for the fraud, the bank for risk management and fraud, you have an extensive set of data. It's an ISO messages. You have like tons of fields of data. So it helped the bank to scan those messages efficiently and provide the services to the back to their clients in like less than five seconds and that's going to be the future and that's where it lies. Excellent. Uh, Raina, did you have any comments on the, the future of, uh, of payments? No, I agree with um, Anand. We, we live in a world where the young generation doesn't have the concept of waiting for anything to happen, let alone their payment to move from here to there. So I, I think we just need to prepare for them and we need to be ready because they're here and you know they're here to stay. So there's there's value in faster and better payments. If um, if we can address and do address the security and processes, why have all this extra friction for time, etc. And so the the open open APIs help address that. Thank you both for your time. Any final thoughts? Final thought is that if anybody wants to see the, how the solution operates, or if any banks is interested to the business case, we are at the booth. We are there to demonstrate. Uh, we have a sandbox environment where they can play with it. So that gives them the flexibility to see it. And uh, of course, yesterday we did together some session. So any banks is interested, that would be helpful. Perfect. Thanks a lot for uh, listening and uh, joining with us. Mm -hmm.